We've got a standby crew here who is uh, pulling worship together for you all. So Noreen, so if, if you're ready, why don't you go ahead and begin the prelude for us? Okay, I am going to ask that people put themselves on mute. And I will get this. Thank you very, very much. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to worship at the United Church of Underhill, an open, affirming, and reconciling congregation. We are so happy you've all joined us this morning for a special worship service while Pastor Jen is um, away on a well-deserved vacation. We did try to call her multiple times to figure out how to get this Zoom thing going, and we think she is pedaling a bicycle up on the uh, causeway in Colchester somewhere and probably um, turned her phone off, hopefully. So it takes thousands to uh, make one of these things work. And today, uh, Sandy Wilmot, Bev Frank, Noreen, Liz Manns, many others, um, uh, many others uh, help to pull all of this together. So let me turn it to Sandy to lead us in our call to worship. Good morning. I will uh, read the unbolded text and you all join me on mute uh, with the bolded text. We gather in the presence of God to encounter love that sets free. We do, we do not, not come seeking crumbs of justice, but a way of life that liberates. Together, we practice courage in resisting evil and rejecting the temptations of complicity and complacency. The Spirit leads us in power and truth. Our faith is placed in love eternal that lifts broken spirits and brings new life from places of ruin with hope that is neither narrow nor fragile. We come to follow Christ. All right. Now I invite you to join me on mute. Oh, hang on. Just a second, I'm getting there. There we go.
Bev, you're on mute. Good morning. This is Bev and Noreen bringing you the United Church of Underhill Some Good News Edition 2. Let's get started with some updates from what we brought you last time. Remember this guy? And then we showed you Bill ringing the bell each day at 10 o'clock. Well, it seems our bell ringing is giving neighbors who hear it every day something to look forward to. Meet Bowden, Beckett, and Heather, who are our neighbors up on the hill. Each morning they pause and when they hear the bells and reflect on what they are thankful for. I'm sending well wishes to Mimi and I'm sending well wishes to anyone who is sick and needs love and strength. And I'm thankful. You want to do another thankful? Yeah, you can. Go ahead. I'm sending well wishes that all the people have COVID just waiting in the Aww, that's so <laughs> <laughs> On our part, we offered them the opportunity to come and ring our bell. Heather shared the night before was as exciting as Christmas Eve. moment and I'm grateful for you too. Thank you so much for this opportunity. And who are you sending well wishes to today? Yeah, that sounds like that. Um, who are you going to send well wishes to today? Chevy. You're sending it to Chevy the dog. Who are you sending well wishes to today? Me. To Mimi. I'm sending well wishes to anyone who is sick and needs love and strength. It was so much fun. They'll be back this week to help ring the bell again. It's a tradition for bell ringers to sign the, the wall in the, in the belfry. So we have a special section now for COVID-19 bell ringers. So, Boy, have we had some hot weather lately. What do we have lo to look forward to? Let's check in with our number one weather woman, Fran. Well, 
Okay, we're here today to check on the weather. Fran! Hi, Fran. How's the weather today? It looks like another fine day. It is indeed. Great. We'll keep getting weather from you. Now, in our first edition, we had a report from the Bellfields, who gave us a sports report. If you remember, they were hunkered down inside their house with but it seems with all this nice weather, they've moved outside. Bonnie. Yes, one second. Good morning, Vermont. Shut that door. Shut that door. Today's sports report checks in with that crazy sports family, the Belfields in Jericho. COVID-19 has not dampened the spirits nor limited their athletic prowess. Last we tuned in, they were neck deep in indoor board games during what should have been the 2020 NCAA basketball tournament. No 2020 Summer Olympics? No problem. The Belfields have embraced many of the summer game sports. First up, mountain biking. Brooklyn is exploring this sport. Cochrane Ski Area is a gem. She's even become friends with the dirt as she <laughs> fell and became one with the ground. But she bounced back up to take part in slide two. Open water swimming on Lake Champlain, though I'm pretty sure life jackets are not allowed in the Olympics. Slide three, please. White water kayaking. Okay, kayaking minus the white water, but it was a great family competition up in the islands. Though Matt challenged himself in the gold medal round to an excursion to an island, only to be thwarted by high waves and he had to abandon the attempt and settle for the silver. A new sport was added due to the influx of rabbits in Jericho, bunny wrangling. I'm happy to report none have been captured. They are all still running amok and providing entertainment to our cat Trixie. Week two of the Olympics saw a new competitor try her luck at ladder ball. I'm pretty sure she tossed her way to victory, but who's keeping score? A rest day was thrown in, so perfection, that game of put the plastic shaped pieces in their respective spots before the timer runs out and the pieces pop in your face. It was brought out, three to four contestants played successfully, until the timer malfunctioned. Hmm, so that's why it was in the clutter barn. Week three, the final week of the Olympic Games for 2020, brought out fierce competition in the badminton, on the badminton stage. Though instead of points being the goal, this team tries to see how many times they can volley back and forth. I'm pretty sure the dominant team of China does not play by these rules. And last but not least, croquet. The athlete trying to distract the youngster has been hooked on this game since the snow melted. Unfortunately, no one wants to compete against him anymore because of his ruthless tactics and his lack of empathy for those less skilled than he. <laughs> well, folks, that's all for now. Be sure to get out and enjoy all the activities that Vermont has to offer. And remember, we are all gold medalists in this game of life. See you next time. Okay, thank you, Bonnie. And now back to Dan. 
Thank you. Wow, that's great. All good news there. I invite everyone to take just a moment, unmute, and share. The peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. And also with you. with you. Also with you. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Great to have everybody here, and I apologize again for our little technological glitches, but uh, let me ask everyone if you could put yourself back on mute, and Noreen, I will turn it back to you for our peace song. the moment in our service today where we um, share our prayers, the recording, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you. And now back to Bev for Good News Segment 2. Well, it's been about eight months now that we've been wrestling with this pandemic and the challenges that it presents. So we decided to take a look at how a few of our, to take a look of a few of us on how we are adjusting and making positive changes to ourselves and to others. We're all trying to do our best to stay healthy. And one of the best ways to do this is to wear a mask. We found a couple people in our church family who are making a contribution to this effort. We first have Pat Johnson, who is a member of the Ladies' Lunch Bunch and has taken some time away from her quilting to make masks. She has displayed them in front of her house and is giving them, the way, giving them away to her friends and even to yours truly. We're all concerned about our kids going back to school next month. So two young ladies hearing that each student would need three masks each day for school decided to do something about it. Hi, this afternoon I'm on Poker Hill Road with a young entrepreneur named Lily Blodgett. She has just recently opened her business of mask making. 
Hi, Lily. Hi. How's business? Good. Good. What made you start making masks? We started making masks as a fun project for me and my grandmother to do, knowing it would also help some other kids make masks. Good. Can you tell me about them? difficulties <laughs> oh dear hang on I'm <clears throat> oh dear this might be a Wi-Fi connective issue <sighs> well what she did was go on to tell about um, all the masks she has. She does them in a whole lot of different sizes, um, sizes for adults and several sizes for, for children as well. Um, I asked her if she he took special orders and she said, yes, she does. So if you'd like to order one, you can talk to her grandmother, Rhonda Blodgett. Her contact information is in the church directory. So good news is moving so fast that I already have an update on these two young ladies business. They've expanded. Over in Underhill, we found a food hut across from the town hall. Neighbors have been dropping off all kinds of food, everything from produce for their garden, this might help you Dave, eggs and even cereal. Anyone can go and help themselves anytime. Speaking of the town hall, we had a record number of voters voting in our primary this week. People all over the state were voting by mail and for those who wanted to vote in person, safety and social distancing precautions were laid out in all the voting places. Democracy is alive and well and thank you to all town officials who made this possible. One of the greatest challenges to overcome was met by the color, clutter barn crew and boy, did they do it in a big way. Last time we reported in, in, they had just completed their first collection day. More clutter is coming in and they have had their first tent sale and what a sale it was. The crew made it an incredibly safe place to shop and people were so grateful for that and even that we had a sale at all. Shoppers kept saying it gave them a sense of normalcy. Sharon, can you share a front porch forum post following the sale? Yes, I would be happy to. This is, uh, was on the Underhill front porch forum from um, a neighbor named Morgan. And she said, I just wanted to give a shout out to the many volunteers who organized the United Church of Underhill sale Saturday. I was so incredibly impressed by how well thought out and organized it was. The guidelines were clear and they did a fantastic job monitoring everyone, everything going on and keeping people moving safely. My daughter and I brought home some wonderful treasures that are going to be a great source of entertainment in the coming weeks. It was a delight running into folks that we knew and participating in this event in a way that made sense. So Sharon, what have you got planned for the next few weeks? Sharon? <laughs> Sharon, you're on mute. Sharon, can you unmute yourself? Okay, well, I do know that... Uh, okay, okay. I'm sorry, was, was all that I was reading on mute? No, that was good. Oh, okay. So what have you got planned for the next few weeks? 
Well, on Wednesday, we need, uh, at one o'clock, we would like some strong people to help us move donations from the tent into the clutter barn. Uh, next Saturday, we will be pricing and um, placing things. Uh, so, and the listeners are volunteers. And um, on August 29 is our last collection day. And then we'll spend a couple weeks getting ready for our final sale, which is September 19. We are very grateful uh, for all of the volunteers. And I'd like to do a special shout out to Kathy Williamson because she is the one that really made certain that the Clutter Barn operated at all. And also I'd like to thank um, the people who really helped us make make it a safe operation this summer. That would be Dan Manns, Bill McMaines, and um, Betty Wilson, who helped us a lot with the safety issues. So many thanks to all of, all of you. And I believe we had a record collection yesterday with I think 62 drop-offs. That's correct. Right. That sounds great, Sharon. So now about Harvest Market. I'm still really bummed out, <laughs> but could some things still be happening? Everybody loves a parade, a parade, and rumor has it, it we still might have one. Julianne, are you there? I'm here. So give me the scoop, what's going on? We are gonna have a parade. It's gonna be a virtual parade, and I'm very excited about offering this opportunity for people to send me videos or pictures. And I'm reaching out to some of the music that we typically have so that we'll have some marching band music playing and get a sense of everything. So like, Dan, send me a picture of you and your tractor. And mm -hmm. anybody else, I'm hoping to get some kids holding some banners. Um, so if you've been part of the parade, I think those lawnmower guys are putting together their act. So we will have a virtual parade that people will be able to log on to our church website and be able to see the parade. So you're not going to miss it this year. Great. And our deadline is September 7th. Boy, I bet the lawnmower brigade is going to have a lot of good material to work with this year. I think they do. <laughs> <laughs> and Dan, you're going to fire up your tractor? I don't think that tractor even has to wear a mask. I think we're going to be okay. <laughs> okay, great. A virtual parade. Good news from Harvest Market. Yay. Okay, off to you, Sandy. Well, today's uh, Bible reading is from Matthew 15, verses 10 through 20. Jesus called the crowd near and said to them, Listen and understand. It's not what goes into the mouth that contaminates a person in God's sight. It's what comes out of the mouth that contaminates the person. Then the disciples came and said to him, Do you know that the Pharisees were offended by what you just said? Jesus replied, Every plant that my heavenly father didn't plant will be pulled up. Leave the Pharisees alone. They are blind people who are guides to blind people. But if a blind person leads another blind person, they will both fall into a ditch. Then Peter spoke up. Explain this riddle to us. Jesus said, don't you understand yet? Don't you know that everything that goes into the mouth enters the stomach and goes out into the sewer? But what goes out of the mouth comes from the heart. And that's what contaminates a person in God's sight. Out of the heart come evil thoughts, murders, adultery, sexual sins, thefts, false testimonies and insults. These contaminate a person in God's sight, but eating without washing hands doesn't contaminate in God's sight. God is still speaking. 
Thanks be to God. All right. So now for the, the next and final segment of some good news, feeding the heart. Let us pause for a moment to be together in prayer. Loving God, open our hearts and minds to the message you want us to hear today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So the gospel is laid into him of some good news. It's not what goes into the mouth that contaminates a person in God's sight. It's what comes out of the mouth that contaminates the person. Let's take a minute to break this down a bit. Just before the start of this passage, the Pharisees asked Jesus, why do your disciples break the tradition of elders? Why don't they wash their hands before they eat? Well, my knee-jerk reaction to that is, ew! <laughs> Hand washing before meals is widely accepted as an act of proper hygiene, right? So why aren't the disciples following the CDC guidelines for hand washing before meals? The Pharisees believed that eating non-kosher food made a person unclean. Based on that information, I'm choosing to believe that the lack of hand washing is the bad for, for eating unclean food ways that did not always align with God's principles. Jesus was trying to get the message across that God was much less concerned with what they put in their mouths than what was coming out of their mouths. In other words, God was mostly focusing on the byproducts of each action. There's really only one byproduct of what you put into your mouth but there are at least two byproducts of what comes out of your mouth. The byproduct of the food we eat, regardless of how clean or unclean it is, comes out of us in a pretty universal form and ends up in the same place. Yep, we are going there. That's right, just like Tara Gomi's children's book tells us, Everyone poops. It might be unpleasant, but it's a natural bodily function which does not contaminate us in God's eyes. On the other hand, what comes out of our mouths is the byproduct of what we fed our hearts. If what comes out of our mouths does not honor God, you're contaminating yourself in God's eye. What you feed your heart over time can have a negative impact on your thoughts, words, and actions. Kind of like how a steady diet of junk food can have a negative impact on the health of our bodies over an extended period of time. Your diet is not only what you eat. It's what you watch, what you listen to, what you read, the people you hang out with, we have to be mindful of the things we put into our bodies emotionally, spiritually, and physically. This reminds me of a powerful story that I'd like to share with you. An old Cherokee told his grandson, my son, there is a battle between two wolves inside us all. One is evil, it is anger, jealousy, greed, resentment, inferiority, lies, and ego. The other is good. It is joy, peace, love, hope, humility, kindness, empathy, and truth. The boy thought about this for a moment. At long last, he said, Grandfather, which wolf wins? The old man quietly replied, the one you feed. 
In this day and age, there's no shortage of anger, jealousy, greed, resentment, inferiority, lies, and ego. It's on the news. It's in our social media feeds. It's even in conversations with our friends, family, and neighbors, whether your views are aligned with each other or not. The wolf representing evil has a plentiful menu to be fed from and more than enough people willing to serve him on a silver platter. His meals are quick and easy to prepare, but not always the most nutritious. The more he eats, the sicklier he gets, and he's always hungry. The good wolf's food requires more time and energy to prepare because it's made of the finest, freshest, purest ingredients. When he eats it, his body and spirit are nourished both by the food that was prepared and the love and care that went into preparing it. The more he eats, the healthier he, healthier he gets and the fuller he feels. Our hearts flourish when we feed it a healthy serving of joy, peace, love, hope, humility, kindness, empathy, and truth. Someone on the internet named Scott Stable said, you can't predict when you will be the catalyst for something wonderful to light up another human being, but there will be many such moments. When your love and compassion will be the exact thing someone needs to feel understood and okay and inspired to be seen. How powerful is that? What a beautiful way to honor God and counteract the words and actions that contaminate so many. I would be feeding our hearts so that God's light is able to shine for the world to see, hear, and feel. Why not seek out ways to fill our minds and hearts with some good news? Evil might be loud and difficult to ignore, but God's light is stronger, more powerful, and can be found everywhere if you open your eyes and hearts to it. In this time of quarantine, restrictions, fears, and uncertainty, it can be harder to feed your heart with God's light and resist the temptation to fall prey to the words and actions that contaminate us. I came across this short story from another person on the internet named Andy Stanley. He writes, sometimes I just want to stop. Talk of COVID, looting, brutality, I lose my way. I become convinced that this new normal is real life. Then I meet an 87 year old who talks of living through polio, diphtheria, and Vietnam protests, and yet is still enchanted with life. He seemed surprised when I said that 2020 must be especially challenging for him. No. He said slowly, looking me straight in the eye. I learned a long time ago not to see the world through the printed headlines. I see the world through the people that surround me. I see the world with the realization that we love big. Therefore, I choose my own headlines. Husband loves wife. Family drops everything to come to grandma's bedside. He patted my hand. Old man makes a new friend. His words collide with my worries, freeing them from the tether I had been holding so tight. They floated away. I am left with a renewed spirit and a new way to write my own headlines. Today, we've been blessed to hear lots of some good news happening in our wonderful community. We've enjoyed spending time feeding our hearts with the light of God's spirit. The even better news is that we haven't even scratched the surface of the good that is happening around us. This week, 
I challenge you to let your words go straight from your hearts into the hearts of others. I challenge you to rewrite the headlines you see to reflect the way God's light shines from within, for, or from within you, and then go share that good news with those around you. Don't let this be the end of some good news. Look around you, find it, shout it from the roof, rooftops, and let the people say, amen. And now we have a an organ piece that is on a video and knowing that the um, last video had trouble playing I my fingers are crossed that this will work but I, I ask for your patience um, in case it doesn't Okay. <laughs> well, it was a lovely organ piece that we may have to share for another time, I'm sorry to say. Um, so we're going to move on to our stewardship moment. So good morning. And it's really good to be with all of you today. It's been truly a joyful worship service. So um, I'm Liz Manns, in case you don't know me, and I have the privilege of serving on the stewardship ministry. And you might think that's the ministry that uh, is in charge of the financial campaign in the fall, but really it's a little bit different than that. That is part of it, but there's a little bit more to it. So here's what happened. Christmas, wonderful, wonderful season. We roll into January, it's very exciting. We have our annual meeting in our church. We set some wonderful goals. We make some great plans for what we'll accomplish during the year. February comes along and we're working on those plans. In the MICE ministry, the Christian Ed ministry, we had some really great ideas for building an outside prayer um, walk with different prayers at each station. I know the missions ministry was working very hard on the many, many agencies that they support. In fact, there's a beautiful rainbow that's still up in the fellowship room with all the different agencies that they've supported and the work that they do. So March rolls around and as we all know, we are in the midst of a pandemic and everything stops. Everything stops. We shut down. What are we going to do? How would we go on? How would we get through this, this um, cultural shutdown? How would we stay connected with each other? How would we still be the church? How would we have Easter? How would we have Harvest Market? Well, we found out that we could do that. We found out that there were ways to stay connected and ways to still be the stewards of God's good earth and be the stewards and be the church for our community, for our world, and still be God's people. We learned that being stewards of God's world and our church continues to change. It's not a static thing. We learned there are new ways to worship, Zoom. <laughs> We've learned that there are new ways to reach out to others. We've found ways to stay connected. We found that ways to help when new needs arise. We have learned new ways to be the church. Being good stewards of our church, of our world, and of each other means changing to meet those needs, the needs of God's people, while being constant in God's love. I think for all of us, the challenge is to stay open and to stay willing to serve and find the ways to do good for the world through our church, through being with each other and being open in our hearts to God's love. 
So thank you. You will hear more from your friends at the Stewardship Ministry throughout the fall. Um, and I thank you for being part of our church, for being part of the will to do good for the rest of the world. Thank you. And Liz, thank you for that stewardship moment. Um, and Noreen, I think we're back to you for a doxology. I think we need to, I think we need to do the sharing of the gifts and caring for community first. Well, that would be true, wouldn't it, you know? Thank you. So, um, this, this is the time in our worship where um, uh, we bring up our gifts and pledges. The opportunity to do that uh, remains online through the church website. Also, uh, for those of you who may prefer to um, contribute your pledges by mail, um, the church address, the P.O. box is on the website, and, um, and you may send things there. Let me pause with that and see there are some announcements. Uh, Clutter Barn, reminder that the upcoming donation date is uh, August 29th, and the final tag sale is going to be September 19th. There's more information at the Clutter Barn site there, and I am sure that um, Kathy and Sharon, the Clutter Barn team, will be um, coming around to ask for help from many of you. Uh, gatherings we have this week. Um, today we have the middle school youth group outside, I believe, under the tent at the church. Uh, Sunday, we have the senior high youth group via Zoom. Uh, Wednesday morning is the Women in the Word gathering. Uh, and I believe there's uh, logging contact information for both senior high youth group and the Women in the Word um, in the bulletin today. Wednesday, the ladies lunch group will be at um, UCU. The men's lunch group, I believe, will be meeting uh, via Zoom, although I think that group is getting organized to go back and have a meal at JCAT, um, separated under the outside tent. And then on Wednesday evening at 7 is the United for Justice group meeting. And I think if you need information about that, I'm not sure if it's in the bulletin or contact Sandy Wilmot for uh, login information on that one. Um, worship is going to be continuing at 10 a.m. on into the future. A um, couple of presentations to look forward to. On the 23rd, uh, we're going to get to know our leafy neighbors. This is a uh, follow-on to the presentation on our bird friends that Jason Crooks did. And on the 30th is some sort of camp-style worship. I can't wait to see what that is going to look like. And for this week through, uh, through today until tomorrow, uh, Dr. Arnold Thomas over at Good Shepherd is on call for pastoral emergencies and his contact information is in the bulletin also. Are there other announcements for the good of the church and the community? Hi, Dan. Uh, Harvest Market Steering Committee is Wednesday as well at 6 30. Super, thank you. I believe uh, we have a worship meeting tomorrow night, Monday night at 6 30. Worship Monday at 6 30, thank you. And I Sharon, believe this is Diane. Excuse me. Go ahead, Sharon. Membership and evangelism meets uh, Tuesday at 7 o'clock via Zoom. Thank you. Yeah, um, this is Diane, and just to let remind people, next Sunday, August 23rd, um, the, we will have our first Zoom Sunday School, beginning at 9.30 for um, our Sunday School-aged uh, children, and we hope to see lots of kids there. Super, thank you. Lots of activity in the life of the church right now.
Okay, Noreen, back to you for our doxology then. And Noreen, I think you're still on mute. Okay, let me try that again. I'm <laughs> sorry about that. Um, we may, my, it's, I'm getting a message that my internet is unstable, so it's possible we may just have to sing this to ourselves. But let me try it one it, more time. It was working. Go ahead. Okay. God of grace, it is our delight and our devotion to give these gifts to you. All we are and all we have are yours alone. Accept this joyful offering as a token of our abiding love. Use it to bring peace, justice, and comfort to all the world. Amen. As we prepare to go our separate ways today, hear the benediction. O oh God, be merciful to us and bless us. Show us the light of your countenance and come to us. Let your ways be known upon the earth. Your saving health among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O oh God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For you judge the peoples with equity and guide all the nations upon earth. Let the people praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has brought forth its increase. May you, O God, our God, bless us. May you bless us. And may all the ends of the earth stand in awe of you. Amen. And thanks to all of you for being here today. We've got the um, usual information about resources for help displayed also. So please, please reach out if um, if anyone's in need.
Thank you all for being here. Bye. Have a good Thank week, you. everyone. Have a good Bye, week. Everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.